Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Mini True Nerd, and welcome back to Stellaris Apocalypse, where the galaxy is starting to get a little bit crowded. And our once utopian dream that everyone could just be nice and get on with each other and not, like, you know, murder each other has unfortunately gone wrong because we've realized that the galaxy has a south and the south is full of dicks. Horrible, horrible dicks and killbots and slavers and generally bad people. Bad, bad people, so we need to be ready to hold the damn line. So we've got a nice little choke point here. And I've been having a long, hard think about the rhino turtles. Like, between the last two parts, I've been having a good think about them. Because there's three ways I could approach the fact that the rhino turtles, who in all fairness, we did fight alongside when we took out the fanatical purifiers. These guys, and me and them get on, you know, okay. They're up for peaceful coexistence. There is a group of dicks down here, some slaving despots that are moving north, and they like me a lot less. Now, I have realised one thing, however. You know how these guys are horrible cactus teethy slaving despots? Well, the rhino turtles are also slaving despots, so it's not like they're much better, really. So to my mind, I've got three approaches I could take to this frontier of the Empire. One, I could in theory, if they're still up for it... No, they actually don't want to do a defensive pact anymore. They did once upon a time, but for some reason they don't anymore. Possibly because they're dealing with bigger problems to the south, so they're not worried about it. Though, I feel like now they'd be, you know, they should be more keen for that. But never mind. I could try and basically sway these guys and get them to sign defensive treaty. Then, if these guys decide to attack again in about ten years' time when this war's off cooldown, I could move in and try and assist. The reason is these guys seem to like me, so it would be useful to have a friendly buffer state between me and all the other bad things in the galaxy just in case anything bad happens here. The second option is to basically leave it be and just say, screw it, if these guys come further north I'll work on building my relationship up with these guys and everything will be fine in the long run, I might need to slightly reinforce my borders over here, but you know, no major problem. The third option is, if these guys keep moving forward, I could basically join in. If these guys are doomed, I could eat some of the territory that I want. Now, the advantage to that would be, if I could get over here, I could have access to Gargantua, which if you do the Infinity Machine quest line, that can lead to a hell of a lot of good science in that system, which would be very, very nice indeed. Some of these systems are... well, they're okay, to be honest. Two and four, two and two, two minerals, two science. These are not great systems for the most part. There's nothing I desperately want to get my hands on. Let's also actually just quickly have a look, see it. No, that'll be full of the annoying. Actually, yeah, and good luck managing this planet. I'm going to guess. Actually, unrest only 55. Well, bloody done. Uh, so, yeah, they immediately imposed martial law and they built a stronghold on the surface, which did indeed help. So that's kind of why they've got that planet at least partly under control. Well done. Uh, do I have visibility of you guys? I think I've got a uh, shared... No. No, I don't. So, sadly, I can't actually see what's going on inside this empire. So, that is a bit of a shame. Yes, I can't see whether these guys are any good in terms of, like, you know, whether I'd want to integrate them into my empire, because their species has some really good race traits. So, for the time being, actually, I'll tell you what can help decide that. There's an empire here I haven't seen, and I think you guys... Yes, you guys have. In fact, that's literally the only thing you have communications with I don't. So, let's just quickly trade communications for communications here. You guys up for that? Well, if I throw in a bit of money, because I'm swimming in that right now, perhaps you'll be more interested. Right, 131 minerals is all it took to make that happen. And there we go. So, the Collector Empire, who surely must be these guys. And you are... Star Empire of Slaving Despots. Okay, that's... That's not who I was expecting. Hang the flip on. No, that's drawn my attention to these guys down here, further reinforcing that the guys down in the south are total utter dicks. But now, someone else has shown up. You said there was only one I didn't know, but possibly there's a second. Hello, there's... More sla- There's a lot of slaving despots. We need to deal with that at some point. Right, they're also down in the south. Yep, yeah, more slaving despots down at the south. Hopefully they can just fight and enslave each other and everything will be fine. And for some reason, now I'm being communicated with loads of times, even though I kind of shouldn't be, but that's fine. I need the influence to lay down more frontier outposts, so it's okay. Ooh, fanatical purifiers. And would you believe they're down in the south? Yes, fine. So we've got more fanatical purifiers. These guys, however, have managed to get themselves started. Oh dear, no one has contained them yet. 
However, we still don't know who these guys are or these guys. And because there are only three and no one's communicating with them, I'm guessing that means that down here what we've got is the Space Mongols. So I might just send a ship over there to verify at some point, but yeah. If that is the Space Mongols, then... Yeah, the case for potentially having a good, strong border state here just got better. And by the way, I'm guessing the... Yep, some slaving despots don't want me in their territory. That's fine. I don't want to be in your territory either. You'd probably enslave me. Yeah, I'm just going to pull one of my science ships off its duties doing assist research for the time being to send it over here just to go and have a little look-see at the Space Mongols. That will take it a while, but, well, I kind of need to be, you know, ready to communicate with those guys just in case at some point they wake up and go on a bit of a Space Mongol rampage, which is a thing that can happen in the mid-game, which I believe I set in this game to 2275. So, in about 15 years, these guys could start eating everything around them, so probably best I go and talk to them before that happens. I had another idea as well, which is, yeah, this system over here that's got a ruined Dyson Sphere in it, I kind of wanted to have that, and I thought maybe a way to do that would be if I was allowed to buy Sargus and then buy Bovatia, and I could literally just buy these systems off the lovely, friendly starfish people, but tragically, they weren't willing to have it. They're actually... hmm... If I was to buy Ridithi, uh, ugh, but then I can't even ask to buy that right now because I don't have a border with it. And I'd rather not, yeah, abandon this area. I kind of want this to be my choke point. I don't want to get any closer to the actual Fallen Empire, and I don't really want to get any closer to these guys. You know what? Maybe down the line, if you guys run into trouble in some way, shape, or form that's not my fault, I might be willing to take a couple of systems off you in the chaos, but for the time being... Leave it be. We've got planes to get on with, including, rather conveniently, a load of influence I just picked up from meeting all those new people, which means that, yeah, my actual construction ships can be getting on as soon as possible with wrapping up all of this, and then wrapping up all of this too. And the swamp research is done. Lovely. What do I want? Ooh, starbase capacity plus two. Yeah, you can just be swimming in starbases. Uh, alien zoo. Have I already put into a sector any planet that's actually got nice cute creatures on it? No, actually, I could be getting some nice unity off an alien zoo here, and alien zoos are the best type of zoo. So go on then, as that's a fast one to do, I can never flipping resist it. Slight ongoing energy crisis worries me, however. I can sort that out in the long run, but in the short term, who wants to just basically trade some minerals for energy just to keep me going? I bet you do, you adorable little cuddle bug. Yeah, that's not even a terrible trade, all things considered. Thank you very, very much indeed, lovely. General Security Fleet that, yeah, has actually made its way down to Kentherom. Uh, let's just quickly nip over to the Fleet Manager here. What currently is your fleet supposed to look like? Uh, let's say, yeah, now that it can be up to, is it, uh, ooh, up to 70, lovely. Uh, it's a <laughs> I've got two fleets going to have it to 70 ships and only 68 in my entire navy. Really need to be fixing that up. Uh, yeah, let's actually say we want you to have uh, 10 destroyers and then up to 30 corvettes. And then, ah, uh, the problem with the reinforce button, however, is it's basically all or nothing. So if I was to go in here and all... Hello. Right, the Fallen Empire that we found wanted to have a chat. But that's fine. Generally, enigmatic observers are fine. So, as you no doubt know, uh, yeah, dedicated to... Ah, okay. So, they want to move something over to the preserve. Generally, they're willing to respond later with a big pile of minerals and energy. And I'd like to keep them on side, so... Yeah, 10 years happiness minus 5%. Our happiness is fine for the time being. You can have your contribution, just make sure they, like, you know, are happy and safe and whatever. Because they're already pretty happy. Uh, by the way, yeah... My things just fell a little bit there, probably because happiness just fell, so therefore the happiness bonuses went down. Oh well. Yeah, sorry, as I was saying, the uh, general security fleet, yeah. If you tell it to reinforce, it will literally spend all the money it can reinforcing. There's no way to say, like, okay, reinforce to a certain level. It's either reinforce with literally all the money or don't reinforce at all. And I kind of wish there were more options. Like, say, you know, reinforce but only as many ships as it'll take you the next year to build. Or reinforce but only up to a level that I can dictate. As it is, yeah, that kind of limits the usefulness of the reinforce button. Though I can see, like, in an emergency war where you're floating loads of money, you're just focusing on the war, that would be very, very useful indeed. 
I'm also going to move the good quality general, albeit, oh, they're 86 these days. Tragically, you're not going to live much longer. I'm going to move you over to the general security fleet, just because, yeah, it's the fleet in the more important position right now. Oh, the cruisers are ready to go, and the fleet command limit's up by 10. So at this point, my fleet command limit is higher than my actual naval capacity. We should probably do something about that at some point. Uh, care operations. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, fighters and bombers no longer exist. They've just been merged into strike craft, which is fine. Because in the old game, everyone built bombers and no one built fighters. So it's probably best that it just works that way. That'd be just flipping lovely. And allows for, yeah, now it's just a basic strike craft, which gets... Plus armor damage, 100% shield penetration. Could certainly be useful, but to be honest, probably I'd rather just, you know, double down on a bit of plasma. Though, actually, something I should get should be just the star hold. Yeah, let's just get the star hold. It's only going to take 19 months. We really ought to get up to tier 3 technology and get that in play. Ah, my science ship that was just going to go and spy on the space mongols has kind of accidentally come up to uh, the infinity machine. Right, are we actually, uh, are we there? You're just passing through? We're just passing through? Well, while you're there, go and say hello to it, I guess. You are class three. I think that's high enough to do, like, the initial level. Hang on, is this a... Technosphere. Yes, so, sign up for now. Will it be so forever? Right, so, so far... The glistening metal orb has not woken up. I can't remember if the rules have changed this fast. Actually, I can't remember what the rules were full stop. Because right now I can't go and scan it. Actually, I could survey this system. There's nothing to stop me surveying this system. Let's just survey this system. After you've surveyed it, then move on towards the space mongols. That's just lovely. And it does kind of... Oh, hello. That's... Ah, that's just confirmation we've run into a leviathan. It doesn't look like that. It's not Cthulhu. It's just a giant, big, like surprisingly friendly metal sphere. It's fine. Yeah, it does actually rather concern me. I haven't run into a single leviathan other than that. Where are the rest of them? Because some of them can be really, really dangerous. Actually, it's possible some of them are... Actually, no. The systems that were previously not being taken around here have been taken, so... Yeah, not actually quite sure where the other ones are gonna be. Also, just filling in the blanks up here... I can't help but notice that, uh, yeah, this is not a good boundary with these guys. Me and them are okay for now, but not exactly cordial. If I were, in theory, to go and take all of this off them, then Biltron here would be a much, much better place to hold out. Because then we could have a proper little choke point. Also, hello, who wants to chat? Active sensor links, gladly. And also we've got ourselves a new election going on. And, ah, oh, perfect. Nothing but cats. Though, actually, at uh, this point, any species other than humans is allowed to stand. I should probably just give humans their freedom, you know. Like, at this point, we've got enough people in the Empire. Humans should probably just be allowed to stand. The cats have actually outproduced them, thanks to rapid breeding so much. Humans will only occasionally show up. And the happiness should give us a bonus to mineral production. So why not, eh? Uh, is there anyone I desperately want more than anyone else? Investor, 10% energy is quite good. Resilient is just okay. Industrialist is fine. Warlike is fine. You know what? I'll just let democracy settle this one. I'm not fussed one way or the other. Uh, but yeah, I will do that actually. Go over to species and humans. How about you guys have full citizenship? Huzzah! And that has... Did that just hurt mineral production? How does that make any sense? I'm not sure... Also, as everyone else gets utopian abundance, you can also have utopian... Actually, wait, do they actually need it? Hang on, let's just quickly check on human mining colony 01. Right now, their happiness is 77%. I was about to say, if their happiness was, like, already 100%, there'd be no point. But actually, I suspect uh, there's probably a point to it. So right now, I'm making 178 and, uh, yeah, plus 9 to food. Let's go over to... No, not policy. Species... Humans, set your rights. Let's move you over to Utopian Abundance to see what happens. You see, it's basically made no difference, aside from the fact food production's gone up slightly. I'm telling you, Utopian Abundance pays for itself. It's a good idea. And my science ship also got on top of the Void Cloud. We can now research uh, Cloud Lightning. I believe, however, it's not actually that good. Uh, it was never that good previously. I still think it's not very good, to be honest. So we'll probably just leave that one be. Oh, the alien zoo is done. The alien zoo is done. And 
Hang on, clears the deep sinkhole. No, that's not the one I want. I need quicksand basin. That's the one... Not freedom. Uh, yeah, the Athari Sanctuary is swimming in that. Uh, definitely get that done. So clear that out. And apparently some science needs to be done too. One of my scientists failed. That doesn't happen very often. Hang on, what did you just complete? Ah, antimatter reactor. Very, very good indeed. Uh, level three on the lasers. Or... Auxiliary fire control for, yeah, chance to hit plus 5% as an alternative thing I can plug into that slot. Or, yeah, here we are. Cloud lightning. So that is shield and armor penetration. So basically just go straight for the underlying health. Damage 11.41 per time. Ugh. No, I can do without. I think we can do without that. Sentinel point defense. Having some point defense would not be a bad idea. Having the lasers wouldn't be a terrible idea. The lasers are... Actually, why bother with the lasers when I could just have the plasma? Actually, I think the plasma's tied behind the lasers. Hmm. Okay, just for safety, I'm going to take the lasers. Because the lasers also lead into some of the really large weapons that might be very useful to have. Ah, and my relationship with the slavers is not going well. The toothy cactus terrifying people have now locked us out, so they do not like us. Also, who is the new pope? It was... The energy investor guy. Nice. So we're up to making plus 28 a turn. But we've dropped to plus 1, 3, 3 on the minerals. I think the last Pope was... Yeah, he was plus minerals. So this is a plus energy Pope. To be honest, that's absolutely fine. That's looking very healthy. And this means, very importantly, we can put down an alien zoo. An alien zoo that's going to be minded by people who are indeed... Yep, traditional. Unity output plus 10%. Lovely. Now, I should probably look at expanding at some point. I'm already at 5 out of 5. Human Mining Colony 1 is totally ready to actually be put into a sector. I'd like to join it up to Liberation, to be honest. But actually, how many sectors do I have available to me right now? I've got 3. We've also got Sin Aliens. Hang on, what was that? That is... Aha! That is indeed, yeah, Space Mongols. So, say hello to the Space Mongols. We've got ourselves 11,400 strength there. And the ships are really cool, by the way. They're, like, built out of tied-together asteroids. They're really, really cool. In fact, here's the big one. Yeah. There we go. Look at that bad boy. That thing's awesome. 8,000 strength in one ship. It's just a series of asteroids covered in cocky guns. It's beautiful. Absolutely cocky gorgeous. Uh, yeah. You don't want to annoy these guys. They've got quite large fleets. Uh, but right now, for the time being, they're nice and peaceful. I don't really want to go and have a chat to them, uh, but actually, yeah. What I should probably do is now research their language, get that done. But now we know they're there, do I want to bother going down to... Hang on, where were the other ones? We saw... Yeah, here we are. So this is totally Space Mongols too. So the other Space Mongols are squeezed up against... Yeah, some militarist authoritarians who can hopefully keep them in check. And also, ah, fanatical purifiers. Okay. Who have basically, well, understandably just gone to war against everyone around them. But these guys should hopefully all keep each other in check. There's some strong navies around here. Yeah, equivalent forces. I think your forces were just marked as superior. And your forces are... Also superior, understandably fine. So we got ourselves a big blood court there. And another group of, yeah, blood courts right here. Except this time it's the bloody dwarfs. The dwarfs who are going on a rampage and going to take over the entire galaxy. Oh god, it's mortal empires all over again. And barely a year into her reign, the Pope's minor mandate has been fulfilled. Because of course it bloody has, because we're never not building mining stations. Also, that reminds me. We've got cruisers available for the first time. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 lovely. Now, what can we do here? We've got, uh, yeah, of course, the guided slot. Now replacing torpedoes and missiles in one. The hangar core, but I've got nothing to... Ah, no, you do start off with the scout wing, which is kind of bad, to be honest. Actually, it's not bad, really. 12 per time, 100% shield penetration, plus 50% armor damage. You definitely want to upgrade that before you'd bother. And I don't have any point defense, so I'm not ready for that yet. So for my cruisers, yeah, let's just put some long-range medium rail guns onto them just to take down the enemy shields. And then once they close in, 
hit them with, yeah, some much, much nice, stronger plasma stuff once the shields are down. That would work lovely. That's my options here. Yeah, pick it. Uh, so, tracking up, fire rate up. Line, hold formation, fire enemies from medium range. That's probably the better option. I don't want them artillerying because I want them to actually be in range to use the plasma. So let's actually have them on line mode. And thanks to power 4, we have got ludicrous amount. In fact, actually, we've got too much power. We can probably turn it down to number 3. And also just slap on... Can I actually put on double... Yes, I can put on double afterburners. Good. Well, I may as well then. And if I go down to cold fusion reactor 3, I don't have quite enough power. But the cost is... The cost is only 30 less, to be honest. I might as well. Though, actually, no. You know what? I've got good quality armor here. Let's just slap on some armor as well. That's absolutely fine. Also, I've got a plan. I need to start specializing my fleets a little bit more. Because the plasma is amazing. But for the plasma to work, the shields need to be taken down. So, yeah. Plan here. Plan, 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 plan. What if I basically said, okay, what I need to do is my destroyers and my cruisers need to be all about the plasma, and then I just need something to take out the shields. So let's get a new class of corvette out here, and this corvette's job is purely to assassinate enemy shields, which I think it could do very, very nicely with, yeah, the autocannon. So the autocannon against shields is going to be doing about 9 damage per second, assuming it can actually get up close. Now that is way more than rail guns or anything else is going to be doing. So what if I basically just said, <laughs> that's all this ship is for. This is a ship purely to knock out the enemy shields and then it's pretty much done. Naturally, therefore, its job is basically to swarm, get up front and destroy everything. And it can indeed be nice and well shielded as well. And that's literally all this ship is for. And indeed, I'm rather inspired by the actual just name of the hull design. Yeah, the Interceptor. Its job is to get forward and intercept the enemy before anything else gets up there. So this old girl charges forward and basically takes down the shield. At that point, yeah, my plasma-heavy ships, the destroyers and the cruisers, can just tear apart the armour and the hull from range. Now that, that is going to work, probably. In fact, actually, I think that's what all my fleet should look like at this point. That would just be marvellous. 15 of the basic corvettes, 10 of the interceptors to again take out the shield, and then destroyers and cruisers at the back. Marvellous. In fact, screw it, let's just throw all my money away. <laughs> We're getting it in nice and fast. So at this point, basically, yeah, my nearby stations are just going to leap into action and start building everything I need and shipping it over there. And we've also got, aha! Marauders have indeed been discovered. Marvellous. Attempt to contact them. Right. You're very ugly. In fact, you're, are you plants or bugs? No, ooh. Ooh, dear. It, it, it just glimmered at me. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? I mean, it's green. That's normally good. Also, these guys don't seem that talkative. Right, so they are just uh, referring to us as foolish Duamex, yelling a lot, and potentially... They might be wanting to do some work for us too. So yeah, this is how these guys work. You probably noticed, they've got some very, very big fleets. Their fleets are basically up for hiring. So we're already raiding, no time for that. Fine, if you've got enough energy, you can throw energy at them and tell them to raid one of your rivals. Alternatively, you can hire good quality leaders, but again, it's 5,000 energy a go. And their leaders aren't immortal, so to my mind, it's not a great deal. But potentially if, like, you know, your best admiral or general just died and you desperately need a new one for a war that's ongoing, possibly you'd be willing to throw 5,000 energy at them just to solve the problem. Now, if we're about to potentially put the, uh, the human mining colony 01 into a sector, we need to find somewhere to expand to. Nodro over here is pretty nice. I think there's actually... Yeah. If energy is going to potentially be a problem, then this here, this is a really, really nice world. But actually, don't forget, while we're okay and stable for the time being, we've got multiple little people in our empire that could do with potentially being technologically enlightened. You guys are the... Yeah, you're the Tundra lads. Oh, the Tantra guys here. Uh, nothing major. You are in the Atomic Age, however, so you'd be quite easy and quick to enlighten. And then we have these lads over here, the nice bugs. They're in the Iron Age. So that's going to take a lot longer to do. And just remind myself, these guys are going to be on side, right? Yeah, they're veering towards egalitarianism. Yeah, egalitarian pacifist materialist. 
but the prevalent faction appears to be egalitarianism. Good. These guys will be a peaceful addition to the Empire. That will be fine. In which case, head over to the station. It's time to spend some energy and society research getting them done. And it's not even going to take that long. In fact, I think down here it will literally tell me the progress uh, to 100. 2.5 a month. Oh, yeah. That's going to be done in no time at all. Marvellous. Yep, over at Freedom, it's time to commit. Let's get a colony ship down here and... Who do I want to send over? You know what? I like the Athari. The Athari are good. I like your society output up by 15%. Me and you guys, we're cool. So let's get some Athari in a ship and send it over to this world right here. This is a good old world. It's a shame, however, I don't actually have anyone in my entire empire that gets bonus to energy collection. It would be lovely if we did have that, but tragically we do not. Also, has anyone seen Sol? Because no one seems to have seen Sol. It's always nice to know what state Earth's in, because Earth is always here somewhere. Sometimes it's been taken over by robots, sometimes it's in a golden age, sometimes it's in a nuclear winter and only cockroaches are left. It's uh, kind of fun to try and find Earth and figure out what happens to it, but tragically we do not have eyes on Earth right now. Ah, meanwhile, we do have a special project, Reaching for the Orb. The Infinity Machine might be up for a chat. Okay, but I think I need to send a science ship over there, if I recall correctly. Also, you just get on with that, and once you're done, head in there, build that. Lovely. Thank you very much, construction ships. Uh, da, 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 da. Reaching for the Orb. Yes, yeah, scientist skill three or higher. Okay, I could send the actual science ship straight... Ooh! Conveniently, you're passing straight by. Yeah, you do that research project. We may as well open up a line of communication with the Infinity Machine. Also, um, here's something I didn't realise we knew. Apparently, we know about another fallen empire. The flipping spiritualists are over there. Fine. They're way out of the way. Nothing to do with me. And also, they're a terrifying Hydra creature. Meanwhile, someone's gone to war. Who's just gone to war? That is... Okay, a representative democracy is trying to take the fight back to a bandit kingdom. Intriguing, if I recall correctly. Yeah, you guys are okay. You guys are cool, Xenophil Egalitarian. In fact, you're one of the nice guys. One of the very few nice guys down there. Don't get too close to these guys, by the way. They'll be dicks about it. And they're trying to take the fight to you. Hang on, how strong are you? Superior, but equivalent across the board. Superior, equivalent across the board. Fine, it's a pretty even fight. So these guys, yeah, Bandit Kingdom, almost certainly, yeah. So they basically can just use the Raging Bombardment stance and try and steal populations. So no one really likes them. <laughs> no one likes them at all. Hopefully, at some point, these Space Mongols will wake up and basically just trash all of this and then, ooh. But then eventually I'd have to deal with them. Like, it's probably not a good idea to hope the Space Mongols do well, because eventually the Space Mongols come for you too. Meanwhile, the Dwarves are now just basically throwing insults at me. Okay, fine. I'm on literally the other side of the galaxy to you, but whatever. And hello. Right, apparently at some point we just discovered, like, where all the fallen empires were, but none of them can actually be bothered to say hello. So fine. There's the religious guys, and there's the materialist guys. So in theory, if the, uh, yeah, the war in heaven goes that way, it's a very long way from me and doesn't affect me that much, which would be really, really good news. So I hope that's the war that does break out. However, if it's Xenophile versus Xenophobe, do we know where the Xenophobes are just yet? Because I don't think we do. We haven't run into them and there's only so much space for them in the galaxy. I mean, ooh, it's possible they're hidden up here and that's the reason neither of these guys have expanded in that direction. That's possible and if so, kind of awkward. Because if that is what happens, these guys might want to cut through my territory to get down to the... Oh, not again. <laughs> not a bloody again. It's bloody like space roam all over again, where obviously my empire is literally right in the middle of the battleground. Ah, speaking of the nice guys, yeah, totally. We can 100% swap positions. And we've got UV lasers done together with... Is that the... Oh, nice. I wanted that one. Good. Excellent. Now, 
FTL inhibition. I've been putting this one off for a while, but it's kind of important. Yeah, this is basically uh, planetary FTL inhibitors and starbase FTL inhibitors. They basically say until you have actually managed to take out the starbase, you can only leave along the hyperlane you came in via. So there's no way to skirt around the outside of a starbase. A starbase becomes literally a buffer between the fleet and anything beyond that station until you've taken out the starbase, which is very, very bloody useful. And actually, planetary FTL inhibitors, same deal. Ooh, inhibit the FTL drives of a hostile fleet if you've got a stronghold or a fortress down. That is kind of cool too. So you don't even need to put it on your starbase. You can literally shove it down on the planet. So basically saying, until you actually invade my planet, you're not going any further. Now that's really cool. Fine, I'm getting that research because it's actually quite fast to do. Now next, the game's prompting me to either take down mountains or creatures. Do I actually... I don't think I've got much in the way of mountains. I've got like two mountain ranges there. Nothing much. Yeah, I've got like three mountain ranges in the entire empire. It's not a big deal. Though admittedly there's one more there. I should probably prioritise sinkholes to be honest. Like sinkholes, there's quite a few of them on this planet. Fine, screw it. Uh, get it done. It'll be useful for some planets. Oh, and I suspect over here, right at the edge of the Empire, I'm about to be beaten to this last system by these guys. Who I assume are coming in right now to, yeah, build a star base. Uh, I literally don't have the actual uh, influence to do that, so I may as well pull out at this point. Fine. They can have that last system. I didn't really need it, to be honest. And the star hold is ready to go as well. Ooh. Now that's... Ooh, straight onto Star Fortress. Star Fortress. You know, I should probably get the engineering facility Wanda. <laughs> there are unimproved science labs on my flipping homeworld right now, because I've just been continually skipping engineering lab one. They're fighting. Stop fighting! Oh, we got ourselves a new war here. Oh, by the way, people pointing out, yeah, my VI sounds different. This is a thing you can do. I think you've been able to do it since Synthetic Dawn came out. You can specify what you want your VI to sound like. I always go for the Xenophile one because as people have been pointing out to the comments, it does kind of sound like Aquarian. I like to basically just pretend Tali's talking to me because life is always improved by additional Tali. Now, who's fighting who at this ex- Ooh, that's a pretty big one. So, the Killbots have declared war against these guys, the Mushrooms, yeah. So these guys are Militarist, Materialist, and Egalitarian. And they've just actually uh, had war declared against them by an organic disinfection program. Oh dear. Fortunately, these guys are, well, fortunately or not, depending on your view on it, actually, the Pax Romana just got involved, because they are actually in a defensive alliance with these guys. So, Pax Romana and the Mushrooms are now fighting together against the Killbots. That's going to be interesting. Any chance you guys are willing to basically swap active sensor data? Because I'd like to see how strong those guys are and just basically see how it's all going. I'm totally willing to pay for it, by the way. Yep, 179 minerals for You're full welcome. visibility of that war. Very good doing business with you, Julianus. Now, how strong is your fleet? Your fleet is, you've got 3,000 there, which is pretty good. Problem is, how good are these guys? And you've also got, conveniently, yeah, some strong... Oh, look at this. Look at that. That there is... How strong is that? That's a star base with all six defensive platforms around it. Strength 1,900. At a time when one of his fleets has 3,000 strength. <laughs> These things make a big difference. And we're losing energy. That's absolutely fine. You're willing to accept that. Lovely. Still, on the plus side, those guys are trying to expand in this direction. Not the other. Now, you guys, you actually have to fight with claims because you're not a fanatical purifier. So, you actually won't be swapping territory backwards and forwards. But we will be able to see on the map if and when territory... Oh, you're invading. You're actually flipping invading, aren't you? Okay, and actually these guys are... Oh, did I just see... No, hang on, sorry, I thought that was the Romans there. No, that's the first machine fleet. So we got ourselves a machine fleet on the move, and it's all red and sinister. Oh dear, and it's the... That's the bird style, isn't it? That's the avian style right there. Though it looks a lot more sinister when it's in red rather than blue. And my science ship has also managed to contact... Yeah, the infinity machine... Lovely. It is old. Very, very old indeed. So we can either declare it a divine instrument and just basically get... Ooh, technology of the divine. 5% happiness permanently. 
Let's have a chat with it first. Hello, nice to meet you, says the Infinity Machine. Lovely. Quite enjoyable to pass the time with pleasantries, is it not? And yes, it's a very polite machine, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, we can just basically chat to it and it gives you some generic chatter about how it's trying to solve the ultimate equation. And it seems to be not particularly aware of time. But that's fine because, yeah, between the Infinity Machine and um, the Horizon Signal Quest, you can kind of be aware that, like, in Stellaris Universe, black holes are basically magic time travel devices. So if you just bang around to the black hole for a bit, like, future and past becomes meaningless. So, can we assist in the research you're trying to do, by the way? So, yes, indeed, but... It's going to need a really, really, really good person to do. Situation Understanding Infinity. Updated. I'll consider it, but I believe Understanding Infinity requires a level 5 skill scientist. Which I do not currently have. I've got a level 3, and another level 3, and a level 1 who's just doing some assist research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My chance of being able to help him is somewhat limited for the time being. Actually, that's a really excellent point. I've never bothered clearing out these alien vessels who I think are just void clouds, despite the fact that, yeah, there's these two systems up here I've never actually bothered scanning. Hmm, interesting. Uh, do I have any science vessels to actually send over to that? Yeah, you know what, I'll send a science ship all the way up- oh dear, do I want to bother? No, you know what, I'll just build another one. <laughs> and then immediately disband it, it's fine. That's gonna be faster. And speaking of which- ah, there's the engineering facilities! <laughs> Marvellous, cruiser hull point up. Level 4 armor. Ooh, plasma thrusters. Plasma thrusters. Really good armor. Yes. Ooh. Take the plasma thrusters. That's pretty fast to do, really. Right, cabbage slayers, albeit now with no admiral. Take your fleet and just throw it over here into Baronek. Because that might actually do a very, very good job indeed. Though actually, you could do with some upgrades. Actually, yeah. Do that first. Uh, just upgrade yourselves nice and quick while you're actually at the Arathi Sanctuary. Because I'm pretty sure we can actually do some nice stuff to improve you. In fact, actually, the General Security Fleet probably also needs upgrades. Uh, upgrade you. Yeah, that only requires 55. Nice and cheap. No, no, stop, stop. Whatever you're doing, stop it, stop it, stop that. Right, why did that just happen? Is it because I haven't bothered to build a shipyard here? It's probably because I haven't bothered to... Yeah, I don't have a shipyard here. Right, build a shipyard, build an anchorage, and... What's the... Ooh, more people going to war. Right, the galaxy's heating up all of a sudden. Now, a listening post is interesting. That would let this thing see three systems away, which will give me excellent visibility of... Actually, I can already see two away. Why can I see that? Oh, that's probably because I'm sharing information with these guys. Fine. Uh, that would let me see all the way over here. Wouldn't necessarily be that useful, to be honest. What else could I do that might be more useful? Sublight speed down. Hyperlane registrar is kind of fun. Maybe I'll just go for... Yeah, as we're going to actually be settling a fleet here, let's just start off with crew quarters. I'll unlock more buildings as time goes by. Now, who's actually fighting? So, it is... You guys... Do I know who you guys are? You don't ring a bell. I'm not 100% sure I know who... Wait, hang on. Hang on. Ah! Right. By any chance, did you guys... Yeah, they're rebels. Right, that's what's gone on here. So this little empire right here has totally just had some breakaway stuff happen to them. Fine. So a couple of their systems have literally just broken away an assembly of clans, albeit their fleet power is pathetic and your fleet power is pretty decent. So unfortunately, they're a little bit on the screwed side. Okay, now upgraded, deploy the fleet to deal with the actual void clouds, and then over at the Athari Sanctuary, which I'm pretty sure does have... Hang on. Hamcad Station. Right, when we rename the system, can we just auto-rename the station? That would be useful. And we're back into food surplus as well, so pop growth up 2% across 6 planets. Good. That is very, very worthwhile. Now, how's the war going? We've got... Oh. Right. So, the war's going a little bit confusingly, because unfortunately, a giant alien vessel... <laughs> The bloody spectral wraith thing just showed up and basically just ate everything. So now no one owns that system because a giant dick is just wandering around eating things. And fortunately, it would appear to be heading towards killbot territory. <laughs> so that's good. 
Now what do we have here? We've got machine fleets. Where are you trying to get to? You're just heading north. System I see no complete. major sign of an invasion yet and no sign of any system being occupied. Possibly the arrival of a Leviathan has kind of just thrown a bit of a curveball into this war. Now also, we've just arrived here into the system where I thought there was a void cloud and there's no void cloud. So, okay, fair enough. Um, Athari Sanctuary. Yeah, Athari Station here. I need you to build. No, I don't, because that's not how building science ships work, so I didn't even need that shipyard. Uh, yeah, I just need the Athari Sanctuary to build me one science ship, which we will use to explore these two systems and then break down because I don't need it anymore. And, oh, pirate sighted. Where? They can only be in so many... Oh, blimey. Where have you just shown up? Because that's... That's quite a lot of pirates. Hello. Where on earth is this? They must be dealt with. Wait, hang on. Hang the flip on. Oh, of course. Literally the only system they were likely to show up in. Yeah, right here. So, logically, this pirate fleet is going to try and migrate north and attack me. That's absolutely fine. And look, the pirates are getting a lot stronger now. Now this pirate fleet is 1,300. This is why you want to lock down empty systems, damn it. Because if those guys had just spawned up here, that would have just caused problems. Fortunately, we've got, yeah, 900 strength in this station, together with 1,900 strength. I'm going to pull my fleet back slightly, however, because I would like to have, yeah, this fleet be, and also it's receiving reinforcements like crazy. Yeah, this will be fine. With the station's help, this won't be a problem. So, that's also a science ship that's just fleeing. This station, what's the state of this station? It probably needs some more stuff, doesn't it? Because it's, yeah, we're literally uh, building it up right now. I could upgrade it to a Starhold too. That'd be kind of cool. In fact, yeah, I'll queue that up now. That just sounds badass. And this totally is going to be an important station for us to hold. So let's get it ready to go. And thanks to our visibility, they are... Oh, hello. They've decided to... No! The bastard pirates have decided, screw it. I'm just going to blow up another country's science ship. Because reasons... Uh, so they're heading in over here. Fine. Our fleet has got reinforcements just piling in from the nearby stations. We're up to 2,300 right there. We are losing energy. Where's the actual colony ship? There's the colony ship. It's still some way off. Don't worry. We'll have dealt with the pirates long before it actually arrives. Right. They're currently moving towards us. They are now present inside our system and heading straight to our star base. Now, pull my fleet back for a moment. And the station's under attack. And now, begin attacking. Why do they always make contact during the battles? On the plus side, this is useful. That's a trading empire. That's useful for trading if we need to. So, in comes their stuff. In comes ours. We've got flipping platforms and missiles. So we can now basically head in and destroy them. How many of our new ships are present, by the way? This is also the Raider Croy, baby. Good ship. Uh, so we're basically going to start tearing these... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I think with the help of this here platform, we got this, damn it. I think we got this. And they've just been annihilated. Nice. Very, very nice indeed. And that guy, I believe, just went up to level 3. I think he was only level 2 before. Yes, he has indeed leveled up. So now he gets fire rate plus 9%. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, now, just for safety, nothing we can learn from those guys. No, nothing we can learn from those guys. Uh, pull down here and eliminate this station. And more wars are breaking out, including... Oh, it's a bird-on-bird -bird war this time. And that is... Uh, yeah, you're the blood court attacking your neighbours. Actually, this is the dwarves, who for some reason have birds on their flag, which doesn't help. Like, that's very confusing. Meanwhile, their neighbours are... Ah, yes, of course, it's Twitter. Fine, so the dwarves are attacking Twitter... And those guys are erudite explorers, marvellous, fanatical xenophile, bit materialist. However, their fleet is inferior. And these guys have... Actually, their fleet is inferior too, interestingly. So, hmm. Presumably, these guys as fanatical purifiers, yeah, they're militarist. They're probably going to have the advantage there. I suspect these guys are going to lose some border territories. But probably, these guys won't have the power to push past the actual station. So, probably not going to be a huge war, I'd guess. Also, can't help but notice, despite the fact they are currently at war, albeit a war that doesn't seem to have led to much in the way of problems yet. Where are you going, by the way? You're just backing off. Yeah. Despite the war that's going on between the Space Romans and, indeed, the Mushrooms here. Oh, 
Hello. The Keepers of Knowledge want to chat. Why do you want to chat to us? You're quite a long way away. So we understand your empire is home to an individual whose brilliant mind transcends the tragic primitiveness of your species. Oh, Right, Titia Carpinatius. Okay, uh, well that kind of depends who that is, to be honest. Okay, it's a level 5 scientist. That's why they want her. She's just hit level 5. Uh, what is she doing right now? She's busy commanding a ship that is... I think that ship might be just... Yeah, that ship has basically just been doing assist research this whole time. Fine. So the moment you hit level 5 for the first time, then they decided they wanted her. She's 90 years old. She's not necessarily going to live for that much longer anyway. I would say let them have her and then just basically keep these guys on side. Very well. You may take her. But I want something in return, damn it. And indeed, straight after that, they've opened borders to us. Good. Well, that's nice to know. In fact, actually, I needed to buy a new leader anyway. So I've got this new science vessel up here. So let's just actually buy ourselves a new leader right now. There we- Ooh! Not a single tabby! <laughs> now it's nothing but, uh, yeah, the cabbages or the humans. Fine. Uh, who would like to... Actually, none of you guys are actually any good at doing any of this. Actually, no. What I want to do is I want to hire someone who I might want to put into... Yes, yeah, Spark of Genius 46. Fine. We'll have you, because you, my good man, are going to do a tiny bit of scanning, and then I'm going to basically move you over to research, because Spark of Genius is better utilised doing that. So, we'll just deploy him to explore those two systems. I've got myself a construction ship right here ready to actually, you know, deal with these two systems if I actually need to in any capacity. In case there's anything good there, though, knowing my luck, this is where the bloody xenophobes all live. Also, apparently my fleet never bothered to go and deal with the pirate station, because that was just too much, like, hard work. <laughs> Come on, lads. Like, it's right there. You can figure this out. So, what's my station. fleet looking like right now? Yeah, so my heavy ships fall back and start pelting. My little ships get in there and should actually start firing at least some of them. Should have... Yeah, look at that. There's definitely some auto gun fire going on there. You can see it. That's been destroyed. Beautiful. And the long range stuff goes in. Nice. Ooh! Enlightenment is complete. Good. Good day. Right, so... These guys just became their own little empire. Fortunately, they're all happy and everything. Right, presumably everyone's happy about that, especially the Xeno faction. The Xeno faction should be thrilled about that. Meanwhile, the determined exterminators decided to actually start issuing insults. The organic purge begins with you, Tabbies. It doesn't. It clearly doesn't. You're clearly actually in a war right now to try and deal with these two. No, hang on. These two guys. The Infinite Pond, meanwhile, is probably feeling a bit nervous about the situation as well. And here we go, this is the big one, the Plasma Accelerator. Now this is just lovely, if I could get my, oh, my medium weapons doing 10 damage per time with 100% armor damage and 50% hull damage. Oh yeah, 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 upgrade those plasma weapons and, and go away stupid bird robots. Also, I love the fact that the moment I've actually cleared out this space, or rather checked that it was cleared out, immediately everyone else also just showed up. In fact, weirdly... It's the Fafossans. It's not these guys. The Fafossans have sent a science vessel over here to have a little look at this. So I'm not sure why. You're not going to get anything out of it. But all right, fine. This looks like a fairly large area, to be honest. But we haven't found anything yet. I'll bet we've only scanned one thing. Meanwhile, hello. The Raxar Council wants to actually non-aggression. Yeah, that's fine. You guys are just over there. I see no reason to get involved in your business. I'll bet you're getting a bit... Well, actually, you're getting pretty big, but you've only got three planets, so... Yeah, the fleet is fine. These days, yeah, actual empire size doesn't have much bearing on strength. So you can very easily just keep expanding and expanding and expanding with influence, but not actually lay down any stations, and thus not actually really be growing your, uh, your naval capacity much at all. Actually, let's just quickly check in how all the wars are going at the minute. So, yeah, there was a war going on with you guys. Your war is going... About evenly by the looks of things. So, yeah. You guys have managed to... Actually, you've managed to occupy this one territory. But that's pretty much all you've done so far. So, potentially, the war might just end at a bit of a stalemate with you taking a tiny bit of land off them. You, meanwhile, are at war with the Twitter birds next door, right? Yeah, but no movements there either. How's the war going with the determined exterminators? 
Attack a war exhaustion at 34%, defend a war exhaustion at 34%. So probably that's just a attrition from time ticking along. Feels like no one's really made any progress in either direction there. I don't see any sign of any territory being taken at all. So yeah, a bit of a non-starter, but they are continuing to expand in this direction. Fortunately, however, or well, fortunately or not, depending on how you choose to look at it, these guys, the friendly starfish people, have expanded out in this direction. And now at this point, there's no way to get to the actual choke point I've created other than by going through them. Now, I'm probably okay with that because that now means I've actually got buffer states between me and my biggest threats. So I've got, well, this isn't much of a buffer state, to be honest. These guys are okay, but they're actually behind us in terms of naval capacity at this point. These guys, however, you're pretty strong. So the starfish people, the infinite pond, and the birds up north, all together in a massive little federation. Yeah, they've actually managed to block off this area right now. If they decide to go to war against the Eliminators, you've got to think they'd win. So, my friends, the Krant. Obviously, basically, we hand over everything to them. We hand over the star base to them and all the rest of it. They've already built their own little, ooh, their own cool plant-style things there. You guys are, wait, were you plants? Sorry, I didn't realise you were plants. I thought you were kind of, I don't know, just giant, large-eared moustache creatures. But apparently not, and they are... Okay, they get energy credits plus 15%, uh, but sadly they couldn't be on the desert world because they wouldn't be happy there. Fine. So you guys are just kicking off at the minute. After 10 years, we could integrate you, but for the moment, let's just leave you be and let you get on with it. Because you can just basically get on with your own business. You guys are, technically there are, presumably, uh, yeah, protectorates. Fine, they're... Excuse me? Excuse flipping me, don't you flipping dare actually put a claim against my people. Alright, I know they're disgusting and weird and I don't like looking at them either, but they're still ours. I'm also going to offer them a migration treaty just to make sure they keep liking us long enough for us to actually integrate them. That should be absolutely fine. Oh, and the colony ship has made it. Marvellous. Now, hang on. Which is the plants we actually wanted to go down on? Need to make sure we get the right one here. Yes. We don't want it to be there. Because even though you're kind of ducks, you're not the sort of ducks that like water. Because you're actually platypuses. Who I think like water anyway. But like, you're weird platypuses. Right. Down here we go. Colonise this here planet. And where do we want to go here? Because I kind of feel like, yeah. This spot here would be good. Food, energy, energy, energy. This is basically going to be a world of energy. And I'm going to call this world Limitless Potential, as it is going to be a source of power that will power our empire now and into the future. Absolutely flippin' marvellous. The system survey up north is done. This system's actually, yeah, nice. Worth taking, I'd say. No planets. And I'm kind of curious what's up here. Because <laughs> I have a horrible feeling it's going to be the Xenophobe Fallen Empire. Because there just happens to be a slightly mysterious nebula floating around. Uh, the yeah, blocks all visibility of what's going on in this area. And I feel like, yeah, that would just be the perfect place to potentially hide a fallen empire where the xenophobes Systems want to be. Right in the middle of a bloody nebula where no one can ever see them. So I suspect they're going to be annoyed the moment I arrive. Well, something's there. Hang on. What exactly is, is this? This is... Okay, it's just some space amoeba. Why are we concerned? Just, just send in the fleet. I don't know why we're worried about that, to be honest. Uh, okay, fine. I can see the advantage of bringing the general over, because the general is just basically able to teleport from spot to spot. So go on, then. Bring him over here, and just send him over there. What, what did you just call them? The Life Tree Protectors. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Well, the Amoeba have decided they want to come and take us on. They're not keen on us being inside their space. What exactly is the... Oh. Why every time when I'm about to start a battle does this happen? Hang on. Where, where have we just found this? This is... Ah. Okay. Primitive civilization. Except... Wait. Oh, it just happens to have a really, really similar shield to the guys to the south of me. Fine, in terms of the colour scheme. And they're on a nice little world too. A little bit empty, but still quite nice. Are you guys worth bothering to bring into the Empire? Traditional, nomadic, weak, materialist. Hang on, what are the ethoses? Oh, xenophobe, materialist, authoritarian. 
No, we'll leave you guys be. Fine, but it's nice to know you're there. Right, in comes the firepower. And yeah, these guys have got nothing but armor on them, which is going to mean plasma is going to be beautiful. We're just going to be able to tear these guys apart. Oh, look at that. The armor's just flipping melting. And this is, yeah, Space Amoeba Mother, Life Tree Protector. Fine. Uh, how are you guys doing, by the way? Feel free to warp out if you need to. That strikes me as one of them's already almost dead. Concentrate firepower. Plasma is just doing beautiful stuff. But what is the life tree? I don't think I've come across this before. This has got to be some form of special event inside this system. So I'm now very, very curious. And yeah, concentrate all firepower. I don't think we've lost a single ship yet. Already had to have one flee out. Anything here? Stuff we've seen before there. Nothing major. Deploy the science ship. I want to know what's going on inside this area. Because something odd is happening here. In fact, screw it. Lock down this system. I'm having whatever that is. Because there appears to be a life tree hidden at the edge of the galaxy. And I want to have it. Also, I think something new just showed up. Because I swear we didn't used to know about you guys. The interstellar Arasian regime. You are... Oh, would you believe it? It's slaving despots. Because we don't have enough of them in the galaxy right now. Marvellous. Uh, anything I need to know about? Claims against the dwarves. Claims against Twitter. And vice versa. Fine. So this is just not a happy bit of space. Oh. We do, however, have movement over in the Killbot Wars. They have definitely stolen some territory off Rome. They've not been able to get into here. Yeah, there we are. Second machine fleet. What do you guys have left? Oh dear. The Roman forces appear to have been badly broken. I think they've actually lost a battle at some point. And now... Hang on, no. The expeditionary fleet is here. They're trading territory. So this is actually worth checking out here. So the Romans are moving around here. And they're basically knackering this. Because yeah, do determined exterminator play by fanatical purifier rules. So they've basically just taken this area. But... Yeah. There's robots down on the ground there, who they have no interest in taking out right now. So the Romans are indeed making some progress, but unfortunately, until they actually bring their... Ooh. I want to say bring their transport fleets in. Well, the transport fleets are right there, so if you'd like to go and take that planet, that'd be flipping marvellous. No, instead they're pulling out. In fact, actually, it's a combined fleet. It's a good quality combined fleet there. They've got 4,000 strength. Because they're hanging out together. And more wars are breaking out. Bloody hell, it's the... Oh, is that the Raxar? Oh, that's the Raxar attacking the Dicks. Good. That'll draw the Dicks' attention away from the buffer state with the Turtle Riders I want to maintain. Good. That really works for me, actually. Now, last thing that needs to be scanned here. The actual planet these guys were literally standing over. Okay. Olimar. Wait, hang on. Is that a cooking Pikmin reference? I don't know what's happening here. So, these were the guardians of the life tree. We've scanned the system. There doesn't seem to be anything here. So, well, this is all very peculiar. Well, nothing else we need this ship for. So, hang on. Time to actually shuffle the scientists like I said I was going to do. So, who's not actually appropriate... As a scientist, you are, you're up to level 5, so we definitely want you to be left alone. You're level 3 and spark of genius. You are level 3 and expert biology. So we're almost certainly better off moving... Yeah, okay. So, we move this guy, who's spark of genius level 2 already, over to that. So he handled that now, and yeah, that's already plus 19%, thanks to Spark of Genius. Now there's one science ship down here that needed a new person to man it, so you who were just doing the sociology research, you get on with that, and now actually get on with assisting the research here, because White Eater Technology produces a lot of science, so I want that boosted. And that leaves this ship up here, which now, because we've actually already taken care of that and we don't want to bother scanning these here traces of battle, this ship can simply be broken down. There we go, and that ship's now been removed. And I will probably go and take that system, just because I feel like it, and also it eliminates the risk of pirates. But, once we've taken that, and yeah, with this taken, we've actually cleared out the middle of the Empire, then this ship at some point needs to go down over here and just take this system... 
At that point, pirates can literally only spawn at one spot when they're attacking me. And that's right here. And I strongly suspect that these guys are coming over here to take that. In which case, we'll actually be 100% safe from pirates. Because, yeah, that's not empty space. That's space belonging to the Athari. So, yeah. Actually, that is the pirate threat eliminated. And also, ooh, these worlds down here. Oh, those are nice worlds. Those are nice worlds. But they're a little bit close to kill bots. Who are actually doing annoyingly well at their war. Also, as Limitless Potential is almost ready to go down, and as Freedom is... Yeah, Freedom's in pretty good shape. Freedom is pretty much as developed as I'm going to be able to make it. I'd say it's probably time to actually hand the management of the cabbage back over to the cabbages. So, manage that sector. Yeah, let's actually hand over this and hand over Freedom Station to them. Now, does that mean I still get control of... For the moment, at least, it would appear, even though this is in a sector, Freedom Station still remains under my immediate direct control. Fine, I'm happy with that. And I'll also give them a leader. Ooh, absolutely perfect. I'd like to give them a leader of the cabbage type. As, you know, a gesture of goodwill, I think we should give them, yeah. I'm actually going to give them Honeydew Nectar as a leader. So congratulations, the Cabbage people have had their world returned to them. You will now officially manage your own business. I won't be getting involved anymore, congratulations. And with the tile blockers cleared over on the Athari Sanctuary, oh yes, we can get a Batherian power plant down right next to the flipping planetary administration. Oh, that's going to be good. And speak of the devil in terms of tile blockers, mountains are also done. Ah, core sector systems up. Surprisingly cheap and early, lead a lifespan 10 years, or naval capacity up by 30, or the military academy, hang on, what does that actually do, that's, ah, planet modifier, army build speed, and army starting experience, core sector systems, I'm going to take core sector systems, because I feel like actually we could do quite a bit of expansion, and I won't actually be ready to throw out those planets anytime soon, so... Close that down. Liberation, the system is now ready to go. This is all looking very, very good indeed. Uh, and actually, oh, hang on. Over in... Okay, how many times we just keep the name standardised? Over at Limitless Potential Station, we are just 10 seconds away from our first actual star hold. So let's get down here. Oh, oh, what's it going to look like? What's it going to be? And the answer is, it's kind of just doubled up a little bit. Still, the power's up to 1,100. <laughs> very, very nice indeed. And sadly, I don't have the Star Fortress technology, but that's also opened up two more modules for me. So, hmm. Trading hub gum batteries. Yeah, trading hub's now up to 5.25 energy credits. Okay, but no, actually, I could put... Ooh. So I can actually, there's nothing to stop me having, like, say, a citadel with six anchorages on it for an additional 24 fleet capacity a go. Now that, that's worth actually having a think about right bloody there. Okay, I'll take one more anchorage. That's for the building, however. Construction complete. I'll leave for the time being, but there we go. We've got ourselves our first little actual star fortress was that, together with three defense platforms. Uh, oh yeah. Very, very happy indeed. And uh, Limitless Potential is down as well. Limitless Potential is down. And that is going to give us a whole giant pile of energy to get down there. Manage that energy. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? I'd say that's enough for now. We have pretty much managed to expand out as far as we can in every direction at this point. So, we need to get down some new planets, work on growing our fleet, work on growing our technology, and also start figuring out when and indeed if we're going to start getting involved in wider galactic affairs because uh, the wars have started breaking out all over. The early expansion at this point is pretty much done. Now as empires end up crushing into each other, going to war with each other is literally the only option. <laughs> And I'm slightly concerned about the Killbots in particular, because they seem to be kind of winning their war, potentially. So we'll need to keep an eye on that. And that will be coming up very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been Johns. There's been many a true nerd. And this has been Stellaris. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves- I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE!
die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't. <laughs>